to the Lazy Handle Show. I'm your host, Katrina. For today, I'm going to be sharing my predictions of the Elite 10 coming up in Chatham, Ontario. So before we start with the pools, I'd like to mention that Team Enerson, the new super team with all the skips, has won three events. Now, at the time, they were not in the top 10 in the world, so they did not get invited to this event, but I thought that would be kind of interesting to point out. Starting with Pool A and Women's. So we have Carrie Jones, Flurry Tanzoni, and Walker in the first pool. Carrie, their lead Rochelle Brown is not going to be attending the Elite 10, so they brought in their super spare, Heather Rogers. I think that could take some adjustment for Team Carrie because they don't have their regular lead. I'm sure they've been practicing with Heather Rogers, but I still think it could be an adjustment because it always is when you have a spare. Then Jones. They have a new second, Jocelyn Peterman. They're probably doing fine as a team. They probably gel quickly. But always having a new member to the team is always a struggle. I mean, if you have the same members forever, it's always going to be fine. But with a new second, you basically have to start from scratch. You have to work together and learn each other's differences. You have to work on that. So Jones is definitely going to work on that. And then Flurry, she's taken over the old... Innerson team. I think Kristen, Liz, and Selena are definitely going to help Flurry with that, and this Elite 10 is really going to test that um, Flurry's leadership skills a lot to see how she can take this team. Um, Tianzoni, this new super Swiss team, Alina Pets and Tianzoni, they're working very well with each other. I really like this. They've been doing well at a lot of events and they're really helping each other and that just makes them better curlers so i think they're definitely going to do well at this elite 10 event and then walker i mean she has three veterans in front of her um laney Lori, and kathy so she definitely has to take um their advice and she has to become a leader and i think she's going to do that and this elite 10 again is gonna show where she's at so um you can have two teams from the same pool in a final, but my predictions actually worked out perfectly because my predictions, men and women, both from different pools. So in this pool, I actually chose um, Tiranzoni because I would choose Jones, but because they have a new second, I mean, I'm sure they work well with each other. I haven't seen them play a lot, so I'm not sure completely yet how they are doing. And... Jones will get close to Tiranzoni, that I can tell you, but I am going to give my upper hand on Tiranzoni. Moving on to the second poll, we have Hasselberg and Holman. Whoo, lucky. Um, I like how Hasselberg and Holman are in the same pool because they just recently played against each other at the Curling World Cup. So I think that gives them both a good advantage. And Holman came off the Curling Cup win, which is good. Hasselberg probably talked about what went right and what went wrong. So I think watch out for Hasselberg and Holman's round robin game because that's I'm going to watch the line scores, or maybe hopefully it's on TV. Um, and then we have Scheidegger, one of the few women's teams to actually stay together. So that will be a good test to see where they are in women's curling so far, and that will be a good test at the Elite 10. And then Roth and Sinclair. It's great that two American women teams are in it. It's great after Schuster's gold medal title. I love how women are doing great in the curling world, and I think Roth and Sinclair, that's going to be a good battle out there to see who does well, and it's interesting, but I'm going to give my star to Holman, and I think Holman's going to win it, well, because Curling World Cup ended great in their season, they were, they were having lots of fun at the Team Holman camp that I recently went to, so I think that really helps a lot. Um, yeah, so I look forward to seeing it. And then on the men's side, in the first pool, we have Gushu, Gun listen, um, Moat, Howard, and Epic Gushu, two-time Briar Champ, two-time medalist at the Worlds. He's a great, they're all great curlers. They're sang together. Um, they're going to do good at this event. Gushu's Gushu, right? So they're definitely going to do well, and I look forward to seeing them play. Gunnison, I mean, they're a young team, but really experienced. They have a former member of Team McEwen new, so I think that helps a lot. Um... They are going to do well at this event, I can, I, I think so, for sure. They always do well at these types of events, and they're, each event they get better and better, which I think is great for their team. Moat, I mean, not the results they wanted at the Curling World Cup, but they got close to Kui, 
and they learned a lot from that event and they're definitely going to take that into the Elite 10, especially since there are so few teams in the Elite 10. This is really going to um, show where they are in men's curling. And then Howard, I mean, there are some new lineup changes, different positions, new members. They did okay at the Shorty Jenkins. I don't think they're going to win because, first of all, they're not the best men's team in the world. There are lots of teams that are better than Howard in this event. That's my opinion. Um, I just, yeah, no. And then we have Epping. He did great at the Shorty Jenkins. They won, as we already know. Um, love the Savalang. I've said that multiple times. They play great. Um, they're doing well. They're going to be on Gushu's tail for sure. And I'm really interested in seeing Gushu and Epping because I actually haven't seen them play against each other yet. So I think that'll be interesting for sure. I do. I am going to give my star to Gushu, but Epping will be close to um, uh, Gushu for sure. And then Pool B, we have Eden. Not the results he went in at the Curling World Cup. But it's okay, right? So he probably learned from that a lot, and he needs to take that into the Elite 10 and really play well at this event. So then people aren't saying, oh, what happened to Eden? Like, Eden needs to show this at this event. Patterson, I saw the much Rudy Jenkins. Oh, my goodness, they were amazing. I enjoyed watching them. Um, they look like 19-year-olds, but really they're in their 20s. Um, looking forward to watch them. They could be going to the Olympics in four years. There are going to be some competition to Moat, another young team mm -hmm, coming up. And uh, Smith, Kyle Smith, they're, staying to, they're still a team. So I think there's lots of Great Britain, Scottish teams coming up. So I'm really interested to seeing that, not just Canada and USA, but Scotland's definitely a country to watch out for. Carruthers, I mean, I talked to some people that watch the Shorty Jenkins, and McEwen and Carruthers, just they're talking every single shot. There were no clocks. But at this type of event, there are clocks. So, like, they need to speed things up. McEwen has to let Carruthers make those decisions. He can't always, even every end on second stones, he can't be going down to the ice every single time. So I think that's something that um, Carruthers needs to, Carruthers and their team needs to work on. Jacobs, they're one of the most focused teams in men's curling. They're always focused, which is super important because you're, if, you're not focused, you're not going to be successful in curling. You always have to be focused, and I think Jacobs and their team does a great job at that, and uh, we'll see what that does at the Elite 10 for them. And then Cooey came off a Curling World Cup win. I thought BJ Neufeld and Colton Flash meshed with, really did well with Cooey, and I was not surprised, but really happy because I like Cooey in their team. And Kiwi's very intense, serious guy, so I think that works well. And um, I'm going to give my star to Kiwi. But there's so many teams, it's you can make so many arguments, right? And um, I forgot to mention that, a dark horse. So if I had to pick a dark horse for the women, I would choose Sinclair for um, sure. Sinclair, they have, they finished well. I mean, they do have a new... <coughs> second but i'm sure they practice multiple times i don't think it would affect their team a lot so definitely sinclair for my dark horse and the men patterson they played really well they were getting really close to epping in the semi-final i mean that's just one tournament but from what i've watched they're gonna be competition to moat and cal smith so i'm very interested how Patterson does. Um, yeah, so I think that'll be uh, interesting to see how Patterson does, as I already mentioned. Um, make sure to come back next week because I have an interview at the Team Homa Camp with Adam Kingsbury that I really enjoyed. So make sure to come back next week. And I make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And I will see you next time. Bye.